Bug stuff! Normally, I give you the first overview on the roof. But um, we got a little bit of work to do on here. So, let's see, we got some blue tape down here. Probably faintly see if you look at the side. Try not to look at those shadow lines from the scaffold. What we've got, there's some D-Lam right here. We've got some more D-Lam that runs all the way up. You can see all that moving. And you can see it all the way up there. So we got to try and see there, and it looks like it goes right behind this slide out as well. And I'm hoping that the siding is puckered and that the framing isn't shot, but I'm looking right there. And if that frame is shot, that's a little bit of a work to dig that out. So we got some more right here. Hey, fix D lamb. And in the back, I don't see too much around the back. Looks like we may have some more right here. There's another fixed D-Lamb sticker. So we're gonna take some of this apart and see what's going on. I, I think that may be the worst of it. There's another sticker down here we put. It's this one here. Oh yeah, that little bit right in there is soft. Right in here. It's just right in here. right here. Might have, this might have leaked and got in there. And that's what will happen if you get water behind there. And sometimes if this isn't sealed, the water will get wicked up from the sheathing behind there, behind the fiberglass. So, boy, it looks like someone put this on with a tablespoon. Look at there. Ah, that's some quality work. You can see all that slobbered on there. I'll have to look at the work order. I'm wondering, I don't know if we actually put that in there, but we may end up having to uh, reseal this possibly unless he's going to do it I'm not sure but I know we're trying to fix the D lamb and then we're going to put a new roof on it so right now I can't do anything and uh, those are just some notes we put on there the slide out locks are locked and something on uh, something to take off the XM antenna just some notes uh, what we're going to do and what we're going to take off we try to note all that because sometimes it's takes a little bit for them to get in our shop because we stay so busy we tend to forget who wants what, what and where and why so but it looks like we got that D-Lamb going around there and then on the opposite side so far and then we'll check out that slide uh, the slide out there and see what's going on all with that but I, mean, I don't know if I can see up there if we get these scaffolds close enough I'll show you the roof here shortly anyways and see what we're going on because we're going to have to at least take that whole uh, awning rail bar off just so we can access and see what's going down inside the siding we have to check that out because there's different types of delamination. You have delamination where behind the fiberglass on here is a sheet of uh, eighth inch Luon. That's what's behind this now. Behind this is going to be foam and then behind in the, on the inside now you'll have another eighth inch sheet of Luon and then you'll have your skin of your wallpaper. So that's how it is. And you could have this delammed from the fiberglass to the sheathing or the sheathing to the foam or it could all be you know it could all be crumbling apart I, I don't know so it's not always that easy to do d -lam. you see them on the on YouTube and everything but it's you know as long as we've been doing them it's it's not like you just go hey all I gotta do is this and that it doesn't always work out that way and you're never gonna get it back the way you would expect it right out of the factory because when they're done they're vacuum sealed and everything and they're done just right so you know and they use uh, optimal conditions to get it done you know this is a service shop We've got great adhesives and we can laminate it back together, but now that it's been sitting and you get some of that wrinklage going on, you're probably not going to get every bit of it out. You know, you probably won't. I can see some more over here, some d lamb over that way. Like, I think I'm looking at the shadow line of this, though. So, But anyway, we're going to find out when we tear it open, right? We'll find out exactly what we got. All right, let's show you what we got. That there be some rot. There we go. Then, see it's routed all the way over this. Here's the rear slide. And then we come over here. And you see all this is a piece for the top of the header. And even the side is routed. Which my guess is this one is here too. So that whole frame that goes around the slide out is rotted. And you can see all the D-Lamb in here. So we got to open it up. Then we're going to spray with some old kill and we got to get some fans on it. And then and you can see the whole deck and everything's all rotted too. So, 
you see, obviously it has some serious leaks. You can see all the uh, tape they put all over there. You got tape all over the skylight. And then, uh, you know, the, you see all the cracking around the antenna. This is just a mess. It's just a flipping mess. But they brought it to the right place. That's right. We're going to get her done. Because we're RV repair masters. Rated R on a 17 over the Parent Legal Guardian. Look at how much rod is on this. We're going to have to take that whole panel off. And then this is a, I don't really want to call it a header, but this is the piece here. This, this is going to be obviously above the slide out, but this whole piece up underneath here, that's the whole interior is, is up underneath there. You can see how, just how thick it is, about an inch or so, right here. That's about all it is. And then, um, you know, a lot of people say they like aluminum framing better. I particularly don't. Um, mainly because the alloy is generally uh, weak and also they don't take the time all they do is put duct tape on this but look at that there can you see that joint right there there's no weld in it there's no weld here either or here so we got nothing there we went down here must be some weld welding duct tape <laughs> they got it on here too so but there's nothing there you got a little snot tig right there a little stitch weld Right there, that's it. Now watch this. There's nothing there. So then they just tack that up there, they glue that to that to kind of keep it balanced, but that's it. So we gotta take all of this out, all of it down there, and we gotta rebuild it. So it's just kind of uh kind of a shame because it didn't need to happen that way. But you know, get them built, get them out, get them sold. And people ask me all the time, hey, which ones are the best? I'm telling you, they're all the same, every one of them. You take the decals off of this coach, and you take it off of another coach, and put them side by side, you would not know the difference. Uh, I have not run into one where we go, wow, there's a much better build. The only difference with this one that I see, and this is a plied foam roof on a travel trailer, which is not uncommon, but it's not as common as ones that are not. So this is slide foam right here. See the foam inside there? So on the top side, we have the roofing. Then you have that plywood right there. Then you have the foam. And then on the inside up here is another piece of thin plywood. And then the ceiling texture. But this is a lot thicker than most of the ones that I've seen come through. So in that aspect, okay. But in regards to the actual construction of it, mm -mm. so if you notice on here, there's no framing around it. So they took the, those vents and put them down, put butyl up underneath this vent here, squash it to the, after they got the roof down, squash it down, ran 28 screws around it, and then they just slobbered it with the die core. Okay? So you got to imagine this thing going down the road and all that turbulence of the wind just hitting the vent and hitting the cover is going to shake and kind of vibrate those screws loose because all it's screwed into is eighth inch plywood. What is that going to hold? Really? That's not going to hold anything. So, it, it, at the very least, they should have clad it over with some steel or something. But, we, you know, we're going to end up putting that together, obviously, better than what they did. But these are just the examples that I'm showing you where some people say, Hey, that one seems much better. No, they're all the same. They all cut corners. They just want to get them out, get them built, get them out, get them sold. That's the motto. And every factory is the same way. I've not found one coach... The only ones we have not worked on in this shop is uh, one of those um, canned ham type looking submarine airstreams. It's the only ones we haven't worked on. So, but there is a guy up the road from us who does do those. And um, now how much trouble you have with them, but we've never had one come in our shop looking for repairs. But they also don't have slide outs or anything like that. And also they're kind of shaped different. But anyhow, that being said, all these other campers that we have in here, you know, we get this, that's a big viper that we, we get going. We've got a um, little, that little Aspen trail we're just dolling up for delivery. And, uh, you know, all of them, I got a lance sitting on the other side. You can watch all the other videos, they're all the same. So, uh, like I said, we're gonna end up tearing this apart here and fixing, obviously, all this rot so we can get everything bonded back together, take that down all the way. Put some new sheathing behind here. We're going to have to fillet this all up and clean it up so we can get it back. But uh, it's a mess. It's a mess. There's no protection on the edges of these things. 
you know so now when the roofing is here like well the fiberglass is it sitting up here and you got the roof here and it's starting to kind of just shake and shimmy then you, you get comp the roofing gets compromised and it starts leaking down here and that's what happened right here that and along with you can tell they had some issues right here because of all the tape around there so all that just poured right down in there but there's no protection on there so as we go along you'll see that we're going to put protection we use the 60 mil commercial grade structured tpo that's what we do everything is all commercial but the rolls come 10 foot wide so this thing is only about eight foot wide so i have two feet left over so i make strips and i put them right here and those are the strips that you generally probably see when we talk about it that go across if you've seen other videos but uh, that'll help you know put protection on here like on this screw you know from the roofing so the roofing doesn't get chafed even though it's a heavy grade roofing it's still a smart prudent idea just do it right I don't want to see anybody do these things twice they are a lot of a lot of work we have done commercial roofs quicker than we've done some of these camper roofs and I'm not joking I mean we, we did restaurant roofs and we have done restaurant roofs quicker than a camper roof so there's just a lot to it because every time you touch something it has to be sealed it has to be done correctly because it's a potential leak every single thing these here all you have to do is just put caulking on it no no those have to be primed all your plastics and acrylics everything's got to be primed everything's got to be prepped properly because you don't prep it you end up with this you end up with this we don't want to see that happen people don't pay us for that you know that's why we're the best shop in the country all right, we're on the back side of this flagstaff. That's where we had all that rot up in the header going across. So I was able to pluck that out. You know what I'm trying to do? This is the wallpaper. So I'm trying to get this out. This right here is a little bit of wood. But this is the wallpaper right there. You see that little piece of fiber on there. So I got a little slice in there. We can always glue that back. It won't be that noticeable, if at all. Especially in this old unit. This one over here we took out, but this is all good stock, so if I start tearing into that, I'm going to end up ripping all of that apart because it's still intact. So we'll probably splice onto it. And then uh, over here that I'm noticing on this backside is this. See how it looks wet back there? It all looks wet. So I'm going to take this piece out, and I'm going to probably have to get a blower on it because it still seems wet. And it's this thing's been under cover for months, literally. So... And uh, everybody talks about how they like aluminum frames. Yeah, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? That's beautiful. That's splice right there. And then when they welded this, this piece going across this corner right in there. Let's see if I can zoom up on that. I don't see anything in there. Got a snot weld in there. I don't see anything in there. And they got nothing on the side of it. Got nothing on the side of it. The only thing I saw something, bring this back, was on the very top. There was one little snot TIG weld in there. That's why it's all loose and flimsy and it caused it to shake. And this causes other things to shake apart. But that's how they weld them. Uh, I'm not a fan of the aluminum at all. Although, and, and also the other reason I'm not, this is a cheap alloy. It's real light. And you can hear that. There's no strength to that at all. So it's enough to keep this going down the road. But these campers are like a three-legged stool. If you knock one leg out, it's no good. So obviously you can see we got this big piece off of here. We got the big piece off. It's over on the bench. We had to clean up the fiberglass. And we're going to clean up what we can with these big pieces. We're going to re-laminate this. And then we'll put that on. But in doing so, we had to make a relief cut right there. And we also did a relief cut over on this one as well. We had to do that so we could get that piece out. And all that's going to be hidden. There's an awning up there. So we're going to end up uh, hiding that after we epoxy it together. It'll be all hidden up underneath the awning. It's the only way you could get, get the whole thing out because that would have been so flimsy trying to take that little narrow piece off as it goes down. It would have broke anyways. So I'd rather do it this way. So that's where we're at so far. We'll keep you posted, but i got to get that thing out of there. So here's some of the wood right here. You see how bad that is. You can still see how wet it is. See all the moisture in there? But this is absolutely just rotted. So we're going to get this out. Spray it with mold kill. That's the routine. Wait for it to dry. Spray it with mold kill. We do that twice. And um, then it should be good to go after it dries. We can start put, getting a rebuild in here and putting all the pieces back in.
Well, this was the top part I was talking about. And there's that little tiny weld right there. Real small. Watch this piece here. All I'm doing is just twisting a little bit. See it moving? That's not even, it's not welded in the back on this back side. It's not welded in here. It's not welded here. It's not welded here. That's the only weld you have is that little snot. That's it. It's the same that rail as it goes down the other end. It's the same down there. So that's the way they put them together. Get them built, get them out, get them sold. Okay, so we get our framing in here now. That's what we're working on. Ah. And you can see this right here, that's a half lap. Alright? Right. So I'm on I'm videoing this. <laughs> I got another one right here. He thinks I'm talking to him inside there. Then I got a half lap on here, see? So they fit nice and snug. And then we're gonna screw them together. And we're gonna glue them together. So that'll give some strength in that corner because it's real vulnerable. You got all that slide out. So then we also got screws right up in here. All those screw holes. You got screws going up. And then uh, it's obvious it's glued up there. You can see most of it already bleeding out right here. Everything is glued in there. And all of this will be glued together. Everything's glued. You can even see some glue right on the bottom side there too. All that's been glued in. So that's what we're doing now. He's prepping the inside. We were really trying to salvage all that wallpaper, but it was just getting to be a pain in the butt and running the clock. So I just said the heck with it. I mean, it's all wrinkled everything. So uh, I think I, when I was trying to salvage all this, it just wasn't happening. So I just said the heck with it. It's made an executive decision. You're going to have to put some wallpaper on it, but at least it'll be dry. So the customer could probably put some paper on it, but that's about the best we can do because you're probably not going to find that exact paper right here. I doubt, but he could search around. He'll just have to put something else on there. And we're going to take the cabinet out anyway so we can get a piece behind the cabinet. we got to get a piece in there. And then uh, the framing will go in here, and then we'll fill all this with foam, and then we'll put another skin on top of it. But this main frame is all going to be screwed to the uh, aluminum right here on this frame. And then everything will be all tied and glued together, so it'll be fine once we get done. But that's what we're doing now. On the top side, we ran screws from the frame all the way down. There's there are really long screws. You can see the head there. He backed it out so he could check up underneath there. And then, uh, but we're going to reset that back down, obviously. But those screws, uh, they're like six inch screws, which pull all that frame assembly together. Because I had to put a filler board in there, that filler right here. I had to put this one in here where the bar is, right below that bar is a filler piece. So we got all that together. Now we're still working on the roof, trying to strip it. And then now, uh, once we get all this framed, we're going to clean this all up. We're going to put a new skin on this. And then we've got the fiberglass all cleaned up over there, down the end. And then we're going to relaminate everything back together, clean up the slide out where all the butyl is, blah, blah, blah. Well, we got the skin on. Then the other thing we did is we added a stud right in here. It wasn't very much in here. There's one way over here. There was one way over here. We had a, a heck of a span, so I added another one in the center to give it some strength. So we get that. We just had those on there so when we were applying all the adhesive, we wouldn't get inside. Now what we're working on up here... We are prepping the roof. That's what we're doing now. So we've got those steel plates in there because we're going to need something to secure the curbs and everything too. And even though we're going to redeck it, we're only going to redeck it with a quarter inch. So that won't be enough to nearly hold that. So let's see, we got them all laid out. And then uh, over here, there was nothing. So how do you screw that down? They just screwed it to that eighth inch, and that's what contributes to it. They're not going to be able to hold that. An eighth inch piece of stock is going to be able to hold a screw. So we're going to put some stock in there, and then we're going to redeck it. So we got everything prepped inside too. There's a lot of prep work inside and supports and everything we have to do. So we've got all that. We've got all the plastic and everything. Everything's all wrapped and protected. So that's what we're working on right now. So when we reskin all this, you know, we don't care about all that fleece because we're going to glue everything down, right? That's what we're up to. Now we got all our protective strips on and we got it redecked. And also we got the fiberglass on the side there. We've already got the driver's side. We've already got it glued and rolled out. So this is what we're doing now. This is the passenger side. I'm mopping her down. Got all our buffer strips in there you can see. Uh, 
All right, so we've got turn bar going on. And the way we do our turn bar, right here, is really a gutter rail. But in the commercial biz, we call it turn bar. We load that up with sealant, and then we make sure all the caulking comes bleeding through the screws. That's what we want to see. We want to make sure that we strike all this down. Once we strike this down, we're going to come back with another bead. When that bead cures, we're going to go back with yet another bead. So we load it up. We load it up. And this is the mess that we've got right going on right here so far. So she's a coming along. All done with our flag staff. Put our logo here. RVRI.com. November of 19. You're ready to rock and roll. Head on out nice and clean. This is the way a roof should look like.